Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're gonna continue the creating products and product displays in this video by using inline entity form to actually have a nicer sort of system for product displays. So this module is actually sponsored by the Commerce Guys, and you can see that uh, the creator of Drupal Commerce himself has nine commits in it. So uh, it's involved project, and it's certainly uh, something that makes Drupal Commerce nicer. So you can go ahead and download inline entity form and install it, and I'm going to go ahead and enable it because I already have it downloaded and uh, in my modules folder. Okay, so now that we have that created, uh, I should note that this website might look a little different from the last video. I accidentally completely ruined my databases that I was using for this and I didn't have a backup. So this is a fresh Drupal install and I did recreate the first product from the last video, but not the product display. So let's go ahead and uh, that's actually fine because we're gonna be redoing how we're doing it anyways. So let's go to structure and content types and let's create a content type like we had before that was product display. And uh, let's disable preview, let's disable author, let's turn off comments and let's save and add fields. So now in the last video, we added a product reference to be able to use our product, right? And we wanna do the same thing. However, the option for a widget this time is, last time I think we just did the autocomplete text field. Uh, what we're gonna wanna do is have uh, an inline entity form. Now we have a couple of options here, the inline entity form multiple values or inline entity form single value. Now we can select multiple values and then it will allow us to add more than one product to a product display. So let's go ahead and do that. And this field is going to be just product. Uh, that spelling was terrible. Uh, okay, let's hit save. And uh, it's asking me if we want an options list limit. Uh, I don't want a limit. We're gonna have unlimited here. And now we could even select what type of product that we want this to even work with. We're gonna say product. So these checkboxes uh, give us different functionality. We can allow users to add existing products and it could be starts with or contains, I think, uh, contains is a little bit more performance heavy. Uh, so you might just wanna do starts with. Um, it allows you to also delete referenced products when the product entity is deleted uh, and override labels. So we can override those here or you can choose not to. It's actually nice to keep this stuff maybe in the product display so you don't have to look elsewhere for it. And uh, auto generate product title which I'm not going to select this time. Now for the field settings, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and say this can be unlimited. We wanna be able to reference multiple products in one view or not do that if we don't want to. So we can go ahead and say unlimited and let's save this. Now let's go ahead and create a product display. So we're gonna click add content, then product display. And this is going to be uh, the product name and then the body is just like you normally see it however this time instead of a reference field we have this product and we have a couple of options there's add existing product or add new product since we already have one product created let's go ahead and just add it and you can see how this works we can just search for it like we did before auto completes and then we can click add product Cool, so that's here. Um, you'll notice we have two options under operations. We have edit and remove. Now this is glorious or excellent or whatever because if we click edit here, uh, not only can we edit the details of this product, but it opens it up directly in this page. So it does this all very nicely. Let's say the product name is, product name one is actually stupid. We don't want that name anymore. We want this to be, uh, uh, level up t-shirt, right? And let's click update product. You'll notice that the, uh, the title has been changed. 
let's check out our, if we go to store and then products, you'll notice something. The actual product title did not change. The product title is still product number one. However, the variation title is now level up t-shirt. So this can be helpful if you have sort of generic products that you want to maybe slightly modify their names or you have one product that has several different names, uh, then you don't have to create several different products. If it's one product and it has a bunch of different names and maybe is even the same SKU, then you can do that. Okay, so now let's add a new product from this screen directly. Now we can uh, just give this a SKU since this isn't a real store. I don't have any SKUs, however, I would assume that your store would already have SKUs. Um, keep in mind they just have to be unique. And this product title is going to be Level uh, Up Long T-Shirt. Uh, so it's going to be like a long sleeve shirt or something. And the price is just going to be slightly higher. Now you could have, a, of course, these products on different product displays. Keep in mind your product display is the view of your product on the front end. So like we said in the last video, products don't show up on the front end unless you have a display for them. Okay, so let's go ahead and click create product. And we now have both of these. Notice how you can change their order. Let's go ahead and save this page and check it out. And what we see here is a page with both of our products listed out, but they're just links here. And if we click one of these links, it's actually taking us to the back end, which isn't going to work. However, that's something that we can easily change by changing the display settings and our content type. So if we go to structure and then content types, and then for product display, manage display, we can see here that the product line uh, says that it's just for a link. Now we can have this be an add to cart form or you can have it render the product. Uh, if we have the add to cart form, you can see we have some more options here. We have a default quantity, show attributes, uh, attempt to combine like products on the same line item in the cart, uh, and display a text field quantity widget. Uh, we, do, we can have this text field quantity widget. Let's just click update and save and see what this gives us. If we refresh, you'll see now what we have is a select list where you can choose which products you want and you'll notice the price even updates based on what product you want. And we can have a quantity in here. Let's say we put three and click add to cart. We have now put three long t-shirts in the cart at 1099, giving us a total of 32.97. So as you can see here, we have now taken this, uh, this editing, this product display like we did in the last lesson, and we made it way more visual and way more easy to add and edit products uh, for your product displays. Now obviously uh, this interface is an awesome right here. It's going to require some some love, right? Uh, but that's pretty much how Drupal is anyways. You're going to have to do CSS styling to get everything looking exactly like how you want it anyways. Well that's great. In the next video we're going to talk about creating more complex product types. So uh, check it out. We're going to keep building on this and we're going to keep on making more complex products and then we're going to take you through the whole ordering, setup, shipping, all that stuff. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video. Hit us up at Twitter, Level Up Tuts on Facebook or pretty much whatever. Uh, we love to hear from you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have new videos every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.